Let's go back now to that earlier story. A deal allowing war-torn Ukraine to export grain via the Black Sea is expiring today following Russia's decision to suspend its participation. The Black Sea deal was settled by the United Nations and Turkey last year to alleviate a global food crisis. So what impact will this have? Agba's chief economist, Wandile Sitlobo, joins us to unpack this. Wandile, great to have you on Newsnight. Uh, I'm hoping that connection is stable now. Uh, perhaps we can start off by finding out what the reasoning is for Russia halting the Black Sea grain deal. Good evening, Anli. Thanks for having me on. I think the reasons, Anli, they differ depending on whether what one chooses to believe. Because Russia has been signaling and saying, look, they want to come out of this uh, Black Sea grain deal if Europe doesn't allow them to actually be able to export a bit of fertilizer as well as the Russian agricultural bank be taken back to the SWIFT and have access so that it can be integrated to the global financial system. That was the one thing that they first uh, said. And of course, we know that lately there was also some bombing of some of the infrastructure that linked the mainland of Russia with Crimea. So if you look at that, as well as Russia's demands to actually be back and have access on SWIFT through the Russian Agricultural Bank, you can think those are some of the two demands that they were presenting to the EU that may have resulted to them um, taking the decision that they took today. So it's a bit of a stranglehold. Um, you know, they have a stranglehold over grain exports from the Black Sea region. And in return, you know, they want sanctions to be lifted and, and you know, to be able to play ball again economically. Uh, but if the majority of grain from the Black Sea is primarily exported to Europe, the Middle East and North Africa, um, how, did, how did South Africa benefit from the deal if we did at all? I mean, I think only the first thing we all have to appreciate is that uh, since this deal came into effect, which was around about uh, July 2022, we've seen the easing in global grain prices because prior to this deal, somewhere between February and leading up to June uh, last year, global grain prices had reached record levels and then this deal allowed for a movement of some of the commodities just over 20 million tons of grain that was in ukrainian silos to be able to access the world market when that happened we saw global grain prices easing up by roughly about 20 percent down year on year basis so even if you were not directly benefiting from the grains out of the black sea one way or another, because of that availability of the supplies, one was benefiting on that. And if you are in South Africa, of course, we've seen our domestic grain prices coming down by roughly the same percentage as what we see um, in the world. And that's the benefit that we are able to, to, to draw mm. from this. And of course, we cannot ignore the fact that we do have our own solid supplies in the domestic market. And that on its own, to an extent, it has assisted on making sure that um, we, we do see those uh, declines in prices. And of course, that's all positive when we think about the inflation uh, perspective. So grain prices uh, coming down, that's great for consumers, not so good for producers. What are the likely knock-on effects globally of this uh, falling through of the Black Sea grain deal? I mean, I think for, for sure, if you're a farmer, you would like to see uh, grain prices being uh, elevated to an extent, especially given that the input costs have been high, if you think about the fertilizer prices, um, as well as some of the agrochemicals. But I think at the end of the day, when you think about sustainability long term, everybody mm -hmm. do, does want some bit of uh, stability on the grain prices. And with this uh, Black Sea uh, grain deal, I mean, one of the things that we have to appreciate is that Every time this deal, when, when it was still running smoothly, after every two months, it had to be negotiated. After every three months, there has to be some bit of negotiation. And Russia had always made sure that everyone is sitting in a slightly uncomfortable position there. And all of the doubts and the uncertainty around it has always um, uh, presented some bit of uh, upswing pressures on the, on the grain prices. So it has not been uh, a really smooth sailing, even though we have enjoyed the benefits, of course, like I alluded to, to say, look, if you're looking at the prices now, you compare with where we were last last year, um, there were some some gains that we, we, we are enjoying. But but I, I do think that everybody wants some bit of uh, predictability in the markets, which is why it was so important that Russia is back on the table, but also back in the table with some bit of a long-term uh, perspective about how the movement of grain that will be there. And I mean, I could add only there and say one of the other things that we, we have to appreciate is the fact that even in Russia, there's a lot of grain that has to reach the world market. So it's a one discussion about the Black Sea grain deal, 
But even Russia in their own ports, they have a lot of grain that is there that one would like to see it accessing the world market. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that they want to, which is why the demands about the Russian Agricultural Bank are being put back on SWIFT. I think they are raising those because they are aware of some of the consignment that they need to put in the market. Mm -hmm. Just to hypothesize here, if this grain deal uh, does not get, you know, uh, continued or, or re-signed under new conditions, is there any possibility of markets for our grain opening up in Europe if they can't get that uh, from the Black Sea region? I think on our side, which is the key point that perhaps maybe the viewers can take home, is that in South Africa at the moment we have so many supplies of, of grain. Um, and that means that over the, for the future, we don't think that there may be food crisis or anything um, in South Africa. And of course, that comes from the fact that we have the second largest grain harvest, if you think about maize harvest that we have, and we are in a position to export over 3 million tons of this. You think about the soybeans, we have the record soybean uh, uh, production, and for the first time, we will have over 300,000 uh, tons for the export markets. But when it comes to wheat, we remain a net importer in South Africa. We're still bringing about roughly 1.6 million tons of wheat into the South African market. What is better at the moment is that we have already imported roughly a million tons of that wheat is already in our shores. And of course, some of it does come from the Black Sea. Russia is one of the countries that in fact we do import from. And every now and then you do see some of the wheat import coming from Ukraine. But I think we are sitting in a better position in the sense that we do have supplies in South Africa. The short term that if you are a consumer sitting in South Africa that you can expect, it will depend how the global grain prices react from these news of Russia. And as to whether Russia maintains this view over the long term, if they maintain it over the long term, um, and of course there's a negative impact of that on, on, on global prices, you may see the impact of that in South Africa. But the extent of it is something that we will, will be clear over the coming months. That's the underlying point I think it's important to, to, to take home to say it's not all crisis on our side. As to whether then, to your point about whether there, there are possibilities at which we can export some of the products in South Africa to, to, the, to, to the world market, I mean, we continue to export maize, and I think we'll continue to do that. But in the Black Sea, the large part of the grain that we're getting from there is wheat, wheat of which, as South Africa, we remain net importers of, and we can't participate in the export markets of that. Definitely an agreement to keep an eye on. Thank you very much uh, for explaining that to us so well. Uh, Chief Economist uh, Wandile Sithlobo giving us some insights into uh, that Black Sea grain deal falling through. Hopefully Russia does come back to the negotiating table.